A Golden Chain of Divine Aphorisms by Johann Gerhard, translated by Ralph Winterton. Chapter 1. A Description or Representation of the Theological Places or Heads of Divinity Contained in This Book, Together with Their Order and Connection. The only and proper principle of divinity is the word of God. For God came forth from the secret throne of his majesty and manifested himself unto men in the word. At sundry times and in diverse manners, God spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. In these last days, he hath spoken unto us by his son and his apostles. That word of God was first preached by the prophets and apostles and afterwards the chief and necessary heads of divine revelation were penned by them, according to the will of God. Therefore, the undoubted word of God cannot at this day anywhere be found but in the writings of the prophets and apostles. From this word of God floweth theology, and is busied about it, propounding unto us the oracles of God. Now theology is, as the name itself imports, a doctrine concerning God, and by this doctrine men are instructed, concerning the essence and will of God under their salvation, to know the only true God and Jesus Christ, which came in the flesh. The doctrine concerning the essence of God is absolved in this question, what God is, to wit, Jehovah Elohim, one in essence, three in persons. For God hath so manifested himself, that in the divine essence, being but one, and that undivided, there are three persons, neither more nor less, to wit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father is the first person, neither made, nor created, nor begotten, nor proceeding. The Son is the second person, not made, nor created, but begotten of the Father from all eternity, who in the fullness of time took upon him our human nature, in which and through which he paid the price of our redemption. The Holy Ghost is the third person, not made, nor created, nor begotten, but proceeding from the Father and the Son from all eternity. We must judge of the will of God by his decrees made from all eternity. Whereof there are two more principal, the decree of creation and the decree of reparation, or as the Greek words signify, creation and recreation, formation and reformation. What those decrees were, the fulfilling of them in time doth declare. For what God doth, and in what manner he doth in time, the same thing, and in the same manner he decreed to do from all eternity. The reason of which assertion depends upon the immutability of God's will. Creation made in time is the manifestation of the decree concerning the creation of all things made from all eternity. And it is the production of the angels, men, and all other creatures in the six first days of the world, wrought by God the Father through the Son in the Holy Ghost to his own glory. A great part of the angels fell away from God, the rest being confirmed in goodness, do laud and praise God, and are ministering spirits for the good of men. Our first parents, Adam and Eve, in like manner, at the instigation of Satan, transgressed the law of God, which was written in their hearts and proclaimed by the mouth of God, so then by this fall of theirs the image of God was quite defaced in them, and their nature was corrupted with sin. Whereupon their posterity also were and are to this day born stark naked of original righteousness, and in a miserable manner corrupted with sin. Through the contagion whereof all the powers and faculties in the soul of man are so infected that there is little or no light of reason left, and scarce any power at all in the will, even about the external things. God, who is omniscient, could not but know that our first parents would fall, and therefore of his infinite mercy he made a decree concerning the reparation or redemption of man from all eternity. What that decree was, the fulfilling of the same in like manner doth declare. He sent in time his son to be our redeemer and mediator, therefore he decreed to send him from all eternity. God, by his word, offereth the benefits of a mediator unto all, and applieth them unto those that believe. Therefore, from all eternity he decreed to offer them unto all by the word, and to apply them unto those that believe. This decree in scripture is called predestination, of which we must not judge, but a posteriori, that is, by the manifestation thereof. 
For the fulfilling of the decree concerning the reparation of man, God hath appointed the word and the sacraments. The word is reduced to two chief heads, the law and the gospel. The law is the doctrine of works. Therefore it manifesteth unto us the corruption of our nature. It terrifieth us, and prescribeth unto us the rule of well-doing. The gospel is the doctrine of faith, which pointeth at Christ our mediator, who hath made satisfaction for our sins, and raiseth up the conscience of man. The practice of the law and the gospel consisteth in true repentance, whereunto there is required contrition, to be wrought in us by the law, and faith by the gospel. Faith apprehendeth the righteousness of Christ, offered in the word of the gospel, by which man, after contrition wrought in him by the voice of the law, is justified before God, and beginneth to be renewed by the receiving of the Holy Ghost. For by faith our hearts are purified, therefore the fruits of true repentance are good works. For faith worketh by love, and Christ giveth unto us not only his righteousness, but also his Holy Spirit, which beginneth to renew our nature, and bridle in us the concupiscences of the flesh. Of good works there are three ranks, some have respect unto God, some unto ourselves, and others unto our neighbors. For the sum of piety in Christian religion is this, that we live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The sacraments are the seals of the word, appointed for the confirming and strengthening of our faith, and they are the visible word. Such in the Old Testament were circumcision and the paschal lamb, and such in the New Testament are baptism and the Lord's Supper. By the audible and visible word, God gathered together his church here on earth, whereof there are three hierarchies, ranks, or orders, the ecclesiastical, political, and economical. Of the ecclesiastical hierarchy, the Pope of Rome makes himself monarch and head, but inasmuch as he setteth himself against Christ, he makes himself antichrist. The ministry of the word, or the ecclesiastical hierarchy, is ordained at this day by immediate vocation. The political hierarchy comprehendeth the magistrates, both inferior and superior. Unto the economical hierarchy belongeth matrimony, which is, as I may so call it, a certain seminary or nursery of the church. God in this life puts his church under the cross, and that for many weighty and urgent reasons. But at length he will glorify it in the life to come, being delivered and freed from all enemies, from all evils, perils, and dangers. Death and the last judgment, without going through any purgatory, is to the godly and those that believe the entrance into everlasting life. But the ungodly and unbelievers shall at length be cast into everlasting fire. End of chapter 1